All right, time for another lonely tech cave. I come to me, I ching, I trumped up to me that I did not have my delicious beverage. It's time for another wonderful tech update with me, by myself again. All right, uh, first thing I want to talk about E3 is this week, there's all kinds of video game news you know, floating around out there. And uh, one thing that really, really um, has got my panties in a wad is um, the fact that um, Skyrim is being developed for the consoles first and then the PC second. That really breaks my heart when someone takes a beautiful PC game and then says, you know what, we're going to focus on the, uh, the average user. Actually, let's go ahead and take a look at this video. This is Craig Lafferty from Bethesda Software. Well, you know, we use, uh, we use the consoles as our lead SKU, so we develop towards the consoles, and then porting the PC is usually not, not too bad, actually. And yeah, we wanted to take it and make it really accessible. It's like, you know, it's an open world game. You can go where you want, play how you want, do how you want. So we wanted to, we still have the complexity behind the scenes, but we wanted to make it so that you could, you could pick up the controller and play, and it was easy. The average person could get in. So I am greatly troubled. One of the most beautiful PC games in history is um, scaring me at this point. This game is one of the reasons why I'm buying a new graphics card. This game is one of the reasons why I'm upgrading my CPU. This game, this game is why I'm buying more RAM and, and a new car to drive to the store to buy more computer goods. Tiger Direct store, that is. Or CompUSA powered by Tiger Direct. Right, Dan? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, one thing I will say is thank God it's a PC game because the modders will fix all the problems, you know, the being created for the average gamer, taking out all the stats. Well, we'll put all those stats back in. That's what the mod community does. So mod community, come to the rescue. Make this game as nerdy as it should be. I, I'm going to decree that we all do that. Uh, next up, I want to talk about Bitcoins because Bitcoins are going crazy. A lot of my friends are talking about this in chat rooms. That's all we do. I'm mining for Bitcoins. I have several Bitcoins. Some of my friends have like thousands of dollars worth of Bitcoins. However, there's an idiot website out there that decided um, that, you know, Bitcoins, they're, they're, it's a currency, it's an online currency. If you're not familiar with it, it's an online peer-to-peer -peer currency, and it is completely unregulated, and there's no central bank. If you want to send money to somebody, you generate an encryption code, and then send that encryption code to somebody else, and then they get the money. Well, since it's really not traceable, these guys online said, hey, why don't we create a website and sell every illegal drug known to man, and then only take bitcoins. Well, you know what that does for something, Randy? Yeah, let me tell you. What does that do? You know whose fault this is? Wired.com. Wired outed the website that was selling drugs online and you had to pay with bitcoin. Right. Now, before that article was posted this week, guess what? Nobody even knew that it existed. So, uh, as far as I'm concerned, if, if they get rid of bitcoins and you have yeah. to shut down all your fancy little mines. <laughs> We're making so much money. Okay, but it's Wired.com's fault. I, I, well, it's, you know what? We can say the blame is Wired, but I think the root really is this stupid website. What's it called? The Silk Road. I'm not sure if it's SilkRoad.com. It's just they call it the Silk Road. Because you can't get there, though. You can't get there from the public Internet. You have to be behind, like, this massive cloaking software. Yeah. And it, once you're behind the massive cloaking software, you can actually find their website. But their website's like random characters. It's like 25 characters long, and it's all random characters. It was intended not to be found by the well, feds, for that matter. Well, you know. yeah, but now the DEA says that they are very um, concerned about this. Well, they should be. The guy on Wired.com ordered, like, ecstasy from, like, Germany or something. Well, now the Senate is going to be having some talks. I'm sure they are. They should talk to Representative Weiner about this. <laughs> well, Representative Weiner uh, is a bit tied up at the moment. Um, it, it's, I didn't see evidence of that in the photograph. Uh, oh, well, uh, I have not seen the photograph, uh, Randy. Well, he did. Can you he describe said he, the photograph he, he said he in great detail? The, Representative Weiner said, I'm not sure if that's me or not. Well, then. I thought, I thought he admitted that it was him. Now he's admitted that it's him. Oh, yeah. But he wasn't sure in the beginning if that was uh, an official Weiner photo. Could they call someone in for verification, you know, like side by side? Oh, I'm sure that his wife could have verified. Mm. If that, that's a different kind of lineup, though. It's kind of a, how that how the shadow gets cast. Right. Well, anyway, Bitcoin is in trouble. It's under fire. And the two senators right now, um, they're both Democratic senators. It's Senator Charles Schumer, and uh, he's of New York, and Joe Manchin of West Virginia. They're the two who are pressing the, the Senate to do something. So we'll see what happens with that. They will. 
I mean, the implications, I mean, what do you think? Do you think it can yeah, shut but, down? I mean, Is it going to criminalize it? What, what are they going to do? First of all, think about it. Um, there's been alternative currency forms for a long time. What's that? What's that service where you can buy and sell like documents and all that stuff? And they have, they've always had these weird gold, e-gold and all these other things. You know right. what? This whole Bitcoin thing is a little bit bizarre the way that they're letting you mine and get money in circulation. And then once it gets to a certain level that you're going to be able to actually use it as a real currency. I mean, we're already exchanging it for dollars. But right you know, now, at currently. the end of the day, in 1933, mm -hmm. when we got rid of the gold standard, it spelled the beginning of the end for this kind of stuff because money isn't worth anything. Right. No money's worth anything. I mean, they're basically just printing Bitcoin. That's the other thing. In Bitcoins, we are mining. We're mining for Bitcoins, and we're using our processor power to solve an algorithm. Which doesn't make any sense to me either. Yeah, what, what are we really doing? I, I think that you're, you're, you're running the computers that operate the uh, drug factories in uh, Central Asia. That's uh, very true. could be Russia. It, what else could it be? It's not like you're searching <laughs> for intelligent life in space. They shut down that stuff. They ran out of money. Right. Vision technology from AMD makes you more you. We know what you love. Gaming, chatting, and HD videos. You want to watch up to three 90-minute movies on one battery charge. Load web pages up to three times faster. That's why we combined a CPU and a graphics card. Vision technology from AMD. Vision makes you more you. Get an incredibly vivid and smooth HD visual experience with vision technology from AMD. Awesome. Okay, thanks to our sponsor, AMD. You know, um, Randy, I was down in the store. There's this new AMD Vision Center. Have you seen this? Was it, that your idea? Yeah, I built that thing. <laughs> That's Listen, really it's cool. freaking awesome because you know what? A lot of people want to save money, build their own PCs, build their first gaming system. They're not sure if it's the right video card, if it's the right motherboard. This way, they just say what they want to build, and it tells them what to get. So it's pretty cool. Thanks, AMD. Well, I've got one more thing to talk about. I've got a really interesting voicemail message from the Alamo. Have you seen this yet, Randy? Oh, yes, I have. And you know what? I've sent this to a number of my friends. This is one of the best things, you know, they always say that any PR is good PR as long as they spell your name right, correct? Well, in this instance, a customer got a little upset about the enforcement of one of their rules, and I think without saying anything else, we should just go ahead and show the video, and people will understand. Now, realize that this version is the one that is shown only before R-rated films in the theater, but there's a general G-rated version that's shown in the other theater. Before we go, we do have a contest going on right now uh, on Facebook. It is facebook.com forward slash Tiger Direct. There is a riddle that I'm going to pose to you on there. It's from an old video game. If you get that riddle correctly, we're going to pick one person from, ran eh, from random. At random. We're going to pick, yes, thank you, Randy. Randy the random master. Yes. Of randomness. Uh, we'll pick one user at random. It's a really nice uh, brushed aluminum. Everything fits up to a 17-inch laptop. So that'll it's be fancy. on there. Check that out again, facebook.com forward slash Tiger Direct. Or you can go to twitter.com slash, slash Tiger Direct. Hey, and just real quick. Yeah. How do you like being back? Well, it's, I'm still in Miami, but I love it here. You guys are awesome. You know, a week I'm ago, you, like, you weren't sure that, you know, you would like to live in Miami again. I'm still not sure about that. Internets? <laughs> Internets. Welcome here. Is there anything wrong with living in Miami? You no. Know, the answer is no. Once you're here with all the beautiful people, the turn sunshine, signals. everything, the people who don't use turn signals and make our producers crazy, You'll find out why we love this very multicultural city. And now, Logan is part of this dynamic, multicultural Woo! environment. And we welcome him back. Thanks, All right, let's play the video. you guys actually enjoy treating your customers like a piece of shit? because that's how I felt when I went to the Alamo Draft House okay you know what I didn't know that I wasn't supposed to text in your little crappy theater it was too dark in that place for me to find my seat all right I was using my phone as a flashlight to get to my seat so excuse me for using my phone in USA, United States of America, where you are free to text in a theater. I was not aware that I couldn't text in your theater, all right? I've texted in all the other theaters in Austin, and no one ever gave a f about what me I was doing my f phone, all right? And it was on silent. It wasn't on loud. It wasn't bothering anybody. You guys obviously were being assholes to me. And I'm sure that's what you do, you know, to rip people off. You take my money, and then you throw me out. 
You know, I will never be coming back to your Alamo draft house or whatever. I'd rather go to a regular theater where people are actually polite. And, it, you know, I'm going to tell everyone about how <laughs> you are. And I'm pretty sure you guys are being assholes on purpose. So thanks for making me feel like a customer. Thanks for taking my money, asshole. That's yeah. the most awesome video I've seen all week. It, it, it really is. You know, there's very few videos. I mean, have you seen all these new parkour videos that are coming out on the internet? I've seen a lot of them. What is up with parkour? These kids are going to kill themselves. I've seen, I've actually, those are some of the best videos. Speaking of killing people themselves. People land on their necks Speaking of killing themselves. Yeah. Are you bringing your girlfriend down here or are you going to be killing yourself looking for somebody else? I'm going to be flying up there to see her a lot. Does she, wow. She's in school right now, so she can't exactly leave, and uh, she's doing computer science. So. Or, or is she, or is she um, you know, not really.